inspiration of all that and the artists who came out of there? Oh man, the artists that came, there's some unbelievable artists out that came from there. A lot of them uh, are not famous, some of them are. Uh, the, the ones who are more famous are not the dopest. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, that's the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, The Good Life was a health food restaurant in Los Angeles off of Crenshaw near Rodeo. Uh, it was a health food store that had, uh, every Thursday night they would have an open mic uh, for young aspiring rappers. It was a place, kind of looked like this, decorated with art and stuff, but except for there was natural food, juices, vegetables, and all of that kind of stuff. So uh, the open mic policy was very simple, no cussing. <laughs> you can rap all you want, just don't cuss. And don't touch the pictures on the wall. Two rules, two very simple rules, you know. So. Um, the cu no cussing rule was, was a blessing in disguise because it made them all better MCs. Because if you're going to battle somebody and you can't cuss, then you have to have an increased vocabulary. You know, this is the time when actual, when rappers, you would actually find rappers running in out of libraries. You know, they read, they study, they're not on the phone, Wikipedia information, talking about somebody, baby mama, whatever. They go to get pertinent, factual information and use that and, and increase their vocabulary. So, um, you know, with the increased vocabulary and then the styles that were emerging from there, it, 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 it kind of spawned that whole thing. And the black consciousness movement in Los Angeles and, you know, uh, really across the nation at that time. Was it more of a nation thing, or was it? I mean, because y'all was dealing with your own stuff there in LA, and you know, it wasn't like internet at the time there, so we didn't see. Yeah. All of it. I just noticed that the music that was coming out started sounding a little different, mm -hmm. and you started getting more variety. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, what we relied on was mixtapes. <laughs> our our mixtapes would end up all over the world, man. I mean, we'd literally be in the homies' house making tapes. We're at uh, the, the, uh, the CV shack with Chillin' Villain Empire. Just, you, you just mixed it on the four track. Now we just rewind, eep, rewind, eep, just burning tapes and making your own label and you slang them to the homies and then somebody sends one to their friend in Japan and it blows up all over Japan and everybody in Japan is making a copy of a copy of a copy of until by the time you get the last copy of the tape, it's like, <sighs> and the same thing in Germany. You know, we have so many fans in Germany. If the tape will go over there, make me a copy Klaus. <sighs> so that's how people all across the world, all across the country, you know, um, Bone Thugs got a tape in Ohio for us because that's the way they got their styles from. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's the mixtape circulation probably through college kids and stuff, kids that travel, is what we use to reach out. And a lot of those tapes are still very prized possessions, uh, a lot of people, and, and if you get an original one, that is as good as uh, uh, getting uh, a big old vinyl copy, if you get that cassette. You know? who, who the artists you were talking about as far as the mixtapes and everybody? Who the Everybody, because like number one, the whole show, the Good Life show, would be recorded. Okay. The whole when you go up there, good, bad, ugly. <laughs> if you whack and you get booed off the stage, or if you dope and you stay on there, to, you know, because the 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 Chilling Villain Empire CVE, they would bring the sound system. They had a tape player to play tapes. They had some turntables. And they have a CD player, but they also had a cassette recording, and then other people would have video cameras. So there was going to be evidence of whatever transpired that night from those. But then people would have their own individual tapes because what you wanted to do was make a hot. What I would do for the good life is like I know that Thursday coming up, I'm gonna make a hot beat that everybody's gonna to want to get on. You was playing live, right? No, no, no. I would make a t I, I did play live occasionally there, but I made beats. Okay. So, you know, I would make a beat and, uh, I mean, really, probably sometimes just finish that beat like hours before the good life. Bounce it to the cassette. You know, a lot of people would bring their own beats, but like at the end, when they had a real open mic. See, the open mic, it was kind of structured. 
Next we have, next we have, there'll be a list. You sign up to get on the list. You know, during that, your performance of your song, either you have the option of busting to your own tape or a CVE beat. You know what I mean? CVE beat is like, hey, anybody can get down on the CVE because it's going to be functional, dope beats. You know, so um, I would, you know, during the freestyle part where they would open up the mic at the end where everybody that's been on stage, I always want them to have a beat on that. Mm -hmm. So I would formulate up some and go hand it to Fish. And it's like when they do those Cypher Man, yeah, it's all queued up. It's like, got you. You know, he play a couple beats and he said, this one from JMD, man, cool. Bow. Who's come up? And that's how you know if your beat was good. You know, if, it, hmm. if your beat wasn't good, people be sitting in the chair like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, fortunately I hadn't had any of those nights. But uh, yeah, the, um, that's what I lived for was to let hear what people would do with my beats there. And I, and I would just enjoy all the MCs, man, and all the personalities, you know. Um, like Ava DuVernay, the filmmaker, <coughs> uh, who did the uh, uh, documentary, This Is The Life About The Good Life. Ava's one of the dopest MCs, dude. Hmm. Ava is fire. But she gave it all. I mean, she was a UCL, she was going to UCLA. She was a college student going there. So she had an education, she was smart. And she had flaws, and she was good. <laughs> so she she would be there. She had her group. It's called uh, Figures of Speech. So if you look on um, uh, YouTube, you'll see a Figures of Speech uh, uh, joint. Uh, what was it called? Uh, Don't get it twisted. And got a couple of them. Just look them up. They, she gets to taking them down every once in a while, but Ava got style. She got fire. She can kick it. So, next. <laughs>